getting back to work on the Galaxy after having uh, company for the weekend. So I had a nice visit with a former co-worker I used to work with in Savannah, Georgia. Was up here in this area for work for this past week and uh, so that he had a extra couple of days here in Michigan so he stayed here for a couple of days and flew back today to his home in Atlanta, Georgia. So I hammered the dent out a little bit. Now I'm gonna, it looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna weld these and clean it up with the disc grinder and DA it and get that done. And then I'm gonna come over here and tackle this uh, hole. So I'll probably get the plasma cutter and cut a bunch of stuff out that's rotted and start uh, getting that cleaned up and fixed too. Still a little bit of a dent there and there. Those spots there, are barely, I can feel them, but barely. But these, yeah, that one especially needs more bumping. Um, the rest is pretty good. So I think I'm just going to, that's low, that's high, and that's low. Everything else is pretty good. So we'll just work right in here a little bit where somebody must have nailed it with a big hammer to put that receiver dryer on there. That bumped out pretty nicely. I think it'll be fine. Um, I'm going to weld in these holes next and finish the weld off. You can still see a little tiny, I can hardly feel it. Just a little tiny ding there that I can just barely feel like the corner of when they hammer when they bump that in. But I don't think I'm going to put any filler or anything in there. I think it's the inner fender will look fine. I mean, look at how nice that sanded out too. And that was pretty quick and easy. So this is going to clean up nice it's gonna look good so this is where the battery the way it was originally mounted in the car you can see where the rusted out bit there meets up with this and uh i'm gonna make a new piece of sheet metal to go in here so i think i'm gonna get the old stuff out first but i just kind of wanted to do some measurements first by setting that back in place after making some measurements from the fender to here on the battery tray and from from here to there. I wrote the measurements on the, the car so I'm going to repair this, get the new battery tray mounted and then take the new battery tray out and then I can clean everything up and get some paint on it you know or get it ready to paint anyway. I think I'm going to paint the chassis first and then I'll paint this because I'm using a different paint that's going to be really good fuel resistant chemical resistant paint like an acrylic enamel or something I the only thing I can get in a low gloss black you know in, you know in a single stage paint is urethane and it's 200 bucks per quart in the hardener and reducer to do the inner fenders so I don't know if I'm going to use that or not I got some a couple gallons of acrylic lacquer I could use I just don't want it super shiny it's got to have a bit of a shine, but I don't want it to be super shiny. This is going to be a low gloss Rust-Oleum. The chassis is all going to be Rust-Oleum and underneath the car is going to be all Rust-Oleum. But I want these in a good fuel resistant paint. Before I get too started, I want to thank some of my viewers for sending me parts. Um, uh, Rick, you're sending me an uh, alternator pulley. I have not received it yet, but, you know, with this weather we've had, I guess the mail doesn't come in all kinds of weather anymore because we got our mail, I think, two days out of six last week. So I'm hoping we I get a Monday or Tuesday at the latest so I can paint it and this to finish the alternator up, and I'll paint the transmission linkage at the same time. But, um... I just go over a few things here before I really get into tearing in and getting dirty. I've got the parts for the power steering gear. So this is the bushing that typically goes bad, you know, or gets worn. It doesn't go bad, it just gets worn. And then your steering pitman arm, can, or not, a steering sector shaft, I guess, can move in there and cause the seal to leak. So that part is one of them. And then this is the seal kit for the steering gear. This is a complete seal kit for the whole steering gear. And uh, 
I guess uh, I'm not going to open it up until I get ready to deer, do the gear. But I've also been asked by a couple tubers if there's any additional parts I need. And there is a couple little odds and ends. I mean, I've been doing pretty good. I got a mirror that's like new. I need this driver's side outside door handle. That I'm lacking. Um, Bill said he was going to send me this piece and this piece. I haven't got them yet, but he's going to be sending me this and this. This definitely needs replacing because it would take me probably a couple of days of sitting there with the TIG weld torch fixing all this, which, you know, I was originally going to do, but if I can save some time and just replace that. And that has some pits in it, so I need to, to replace that. The show you what I got. Looky here. Brand new. Where do you find these? You know, I mean, I, I've been looking since I bought the car for a horn ring. You can see how this one's all. I even took chrome polish to that, and it's still, the pits still show up in it. And, you know, there's little pits in here. And it's just, you got to drill those pits out and weld them. You know, it's a lot of work to fix pot metal. And uh, this one has, it's new old stock. It has maybe one or two little pits in it. Nothing that detracts from it. Because new old stock is never, you know, something that's been kicking around for 50 plus years on a shelf. Sometimes new old stock is worse than good used. So you got to be careful when you're buying new old stock stuff. But this guy had some really detailed photos that he sent me. And of the minor pits that were in it. And the price was good on it. And I haven't even come close to finding anything for what he wanted for that. You know, I mean, I, I think I got a pretty good steal on that horn ring. Um, the other parts, which I was going to have re-chromed, if I can't find them, is the turn signal lever and the shift lever. And this trim on the interior around the convertible, you know, around the windshield, I should say. I was, I'm was, i probably going to just get it re-chromed. Um, and if I do, I'll have the, the two levers done at the same time. So those are, you know, those are kind of some of the things that, you know, I, and I need the window regulator for this door, the for this window here, the you know the main regulator. So if somebody has a window regulator, outside door handle. Um, just trying to think what else it it might need. Got a trunk load of parts here. Um, this is the old vacuum modulator, um, the part for the horn ring, brand new. Um, I think that's a power steering pump kit that I just happened to have in my parts stash. So I thought, well, if that power steering pump leaks, I will rebuild it. I don't know what this is in there. Somebody's parts list. <laughs> oh, it's what it fits. Okay, so that piece of paper is just everything that's uh, written on it. But I don't even remember where I got this kit. It's been so long. And, uh, but yeah, so if I need to rebuild the pump, I got a rebuild kit for the pump. I'll probably take the, the can off and clean it and paint it. I'll probably paint the whole pump. But I think the can, it's really hard to tell, but I think these were kind of a, a blue color originally. I don't know, it has black back there. Maybe it was black originally. If it's black, then I can just paint the whole pump in one shot. If it's not, then I'll take the can off and paint that separate from the pump. And I need to clean that pulley up. You know, get all the rust and belt and everything out of it. The pulley's in good shape. It just needs cleaning. Because if you don't clean that rust out, that'll just act like a file and wear your belts out in no time. And if you don't know what this is, I'll show you what that is. Because I got a new one. That is this. This goes in that hole in the firewall where the brake booster linkage goes through. This actually goes on this, you know, between that bar there. Sorry about the brake line there. That bar there and the firewall. So that, you know, 
is that was definitely needing replacement so I found one of these too. That was the vacuum or vacuum advance that was in this box. I wasn't thinking I was thinking it was the vacuum modulator but that's in another box in the trunk and that's the old one the new ones on the transmission but yeah I got a new vacuum advance for it too. Yeah I know it's full of stuff but it'll eventually end up on the car. Um, you know it's I'm working on it getting plugging away at it. Getting a tripod in here won't exist but surprisingly these bolts are unbolting without snapping off. It's just a, amazing that the, that thing come out. Yeah, <laughs> crazy, huh? So this one holds the grill in also, and that one's pretty rusty in there. I don't know if it's going to come out. I'm going to spray that one with some penetrant. Yeah, this one came loose too. Well, so far. I think the bolt just, the metal just uh, broke that it was bolted into, so I'll cut that one out. That's not coming out. It's it's uh, that thing. That clip is just turning there, so I'm just gonna buzz it off the plasma cutter. I'm just gonna cut the clip off and then slide the bolt out, and then I'll break the spot weld here and cut this out so I can weld in new sheet metal. And I gotta and I'm gonna cut. This is a bolt with a nut underneath here, and I'm just gonna cut that off too. No point in. You know, I got the plasma cutter out. I'm no point in horsing with it trying to unbolt it. I got it out quick and easy. I just took the plasma cutter and cut. This is what it was seized in. Sheet metal nut. So I just cut the nut and did not damage the bolt at all. So I can reuse the bolt. I'll just give it a quick uh, bead blasting. And I have tons of these. And... Uh, uh, blow that off and then I'm gonna get out this get all this old rusty metal out so I can make a new piece I think this piece in here I don't know if that's part of this or not um, because you can see there's two pieces here so I think this piece is separate from this so I may have to repair some of that too we'll take a look at it definitely got to repair that because that's where the bolt goes in and that holds the uh, this bolt holds this, these pieces in and it holds the, this bracket for the front grill in. So that definitely needs to be all repaired. Alright, I'm getting this apart. I'm going to weld up this hole here and weld this up. And i got to get this piece out and then I'll uh, put a new piece in here. That's where the spot weld was. I just uh, blew that off the torch. Um, or with the plasma cutter, another one of the uh, bolts for the radiator grill. I was taking the grill out, and uh, you got to get to a screw right here. So there's some bolt, bolt that one bolt way down there that I had to cut that nut. And when I took this headlight bezel off, this headlight had been kind of, if you see in the past videos, kind of hanging out, and I see why now. The little tab that goes through this light attaches right there and comes out and then that is where that hooks on to there. This is probably a little spring loaded deal and uh, anyway that's broken. So if Bill or any of my tubers out there, Bill with your 65, if you have one of these, this is the high beam lower right hand headlight uh, bucket. If you happen to have one and you want to part with it too, um, let me know. I'll shoot you an email later on uh, today, maybe or tomorrow. This is the driver's side and it's 
quite similar to the passenger side. There's a square hole in the core support. The core support just has a cutout here so air could blow through and uh, cool the battery. Um, but I think, you know, and then this, this piece here is a separate piece from this piece and this piece, um, I'll show you, it's this piece right here. And that's held in with that bolt. And I think that that piece goes all the way across there. So I'm going to weld this up so this bolts into this bolt like it originally did. I'll show you on the other side of the car. And then this piece is just a separate piece underneath. And I'll probably, I don't know, I might make a whole new, it's part of, part of this piece. So there's there's number of pieces here there's like five pieces here all together so it's going to be a little bit of putzing around i'm going to fix this first then i'm going to fix this piece and then i'm going to fix this piece and then i'll fix this piece and then mount the battery box and i'll remove the battery box so i can clean everything up and paint it i got the as you can see i got the the grill out and the headlight buckets off um, some, somebody said that this was supposed to be silver. Now, I'm going to clean that up and see what's behind there. Alright, I sanded a little bit of the repaint off and that's definitely a, a aluminum or silver color. So I'll repaint this in an aluminum or silver color. I'm going to pop the bumper off before I do that. I don't think I'm going to pop the bumper today, but I am going to, you can see where I there's the other cut. You can see where that piece kind of comes around there. And uh, that's the square hole you saw on the other side and the hole for the, the uh, air to go through to cool the battery. So looking on this side, you can kind of see that piece that's spot welded to the inner fender. That's where the body mount bolts to. And this is, this is all welded to the inner fender here all the way around. It's, the bolt that holds the grill radiator grill in so that'll be an easy piece to make and you know to fix up when I start welding this stuff up I'll weld this hole and this hole and then all this all the welding should be done under the hood once this is repaired and uh, then get to town on and uh, painting and painting and see all the old pieces down there on the floor why the grill is out I can straighten there's a couple uh, mounting points these are have some little dents in them and I'll, I'll get everything the way it's supposed to be and there was a little dent in the grill right here and I'll repair that straighten this little lip up and then there's paint see how it's black in here and the paint's worn off most of you can still see some of it but I'll I'll repaint all these you know mask all this off and paint that up and clean the grill up while it's out make it look as nice as I can now upon cleaning it up I got some lots of little pinholes in those pits so I'm just gonna cut the inner fender out probably maybe even across to here I don't know we'll see and uh, replace all this because that's I suspect the battery was probably dead frozen broke and then all the acid did all this damage so is it's the only real I mean the other side's perfect you know there's still paint on it and uh, this side you know just where the battery sat here so that's kind of my educated guess. All right, that hole in the core support is welded up and now I'm going to weld up this piece, repair that. I don't know what I'm going to probably just cut it off and oops, weld a new piece on it and uh, then I got to cut this out. This is, you can see how rotted out that is from the battery acid so I made a mark on here. And I'll make this piece I'm going to fix this, this, and then I'll make the piece for over here. How I make these uh, pieces, I just use cardboard. So this, this is part of this. This will be just a piece I tape to the piece I make across here. I'll, you know, I'll put a little bend down there, but this way I know how to 
cut that flap down there because I'm going to repair this piece next. So when I put this piece on, it's done, but I'm going to repair this before I do this. So I think I'm going to do this next. Now that I just got that fit, I'm going to do this, and then this, and then this piece. And if you're wondering what I use to do my welding, this is it, and I use a CO2 argon mix, and uh, I think it's 2575. And I run the the welder on um, DCEP, which is electrode positive. It's direct current electrode positive. See how it's got a positive and a negative? So if you're running a flux core wire, you want um, electrode negative. Which, when I say electrode, that's the wire, this, coming out of the, the gun out there. You know, that you're actually, this is the wire that I weld with. And that, you can see, is 30 thousandths. It's ER70S6, which is really good for auto, auto body sheet metal, you know. I mean, I had a Miller Cricut previous to this, and it had a little lower low amperage, so I could weld a little thinner with it. I'm, you know, this one I can too, but I just got to move quicker. So it just, you know, I'm so used to that other one. But it, when you move quicker, you don't get metal hot out further and less chance of warpage. So that is uh, a little bit about that and then the controls on the front. This has auto wire speed or manual wire speed and I turn this welder down as low as it goes to weld that sheet metal and then I, I just like to use the auto so if you have the Flux core, you use the blue 35,000, you know, you use this wire. If you're using the argon CO2 mix, you use that. So that's auto wire feed for if you're using flux core. That's auto wire feed if you're using shielding gas. And then this is if you want to run your wire speed manually. Um, I just like it on automatic. I actually think that works pretty darn good. I'm, I'm, I like that feature. This turns your you know power to your which uh you know if you're using a spool feeder on your end of your cable you put the switch this way and it doesn't run the motor for the spool in there if you're using just a standard what i'm using you leave it there and then this will operate and just a simple power switch back here that's about it. That's what I use to do my welding. You know, I had a few people ask what I do, how I, you know, what I use to weld, and that is it. I do show this in some other videos, and I show how to weld and stuff, but I don't remember which one. So that's why I'm just kind of showing. And this, this welder will run, it's dual, 120 volt or 230 volt. Or it, it'll run either one, the plug for the... 220 is right there. It's a 50 amp plug. And I just run it on the standard wall outlet for when I'm running it, you know, down here where I'm running it. But you can see when you get up in this higher heat range, you really need to get that thing plugged into 220. I've only plugged it into 220 once or twice. I know the 120 is more than adequate. And for welding, helmet I uh, have this old speed glass APC this thing's just older than the hills but it it's got a number 11 in it but when it's when it's powered on you can see through it quite clearly and then when you start welding it darkens it's it's quite nice you can adjust the sensitivity or put it on manual or automatic so if it's always dark when it's in the manual and it's switched on just kind of a my brother got this for me I've had it probably I would say a good 30 plus years. It was one of the first of the automatic welding helmets. I cut the one piece out, basically what I got a bend to weld in for the one part, and then this is the part for the this, and you know, it's, yeah. <laughs> so, um, I just cut another piece out and I added a little to it because it's got to have these bends in it. Got one piece in, now I got to grind the, I'll grind all the welds when I'm done. I'm going to 
fix this piece and then I'm gonna put I got this I gotta cut some out here and clean up but that's kind of I don't know it's about where it goes roughly then the battery tray goes over it so you won't see it anyway there we be I'll grind out the welds and like I say once the battery tray is in this is the only part you'll see and that'll be all finished to where you won't see it you won't even know that was repaired and that's where the battery tray will go after I get the welds ground and the holes drilled and it painted I'm gonna paint it before I obviously put the battery tray in I'm gonna call it a day so basically you know I got a lot done today I think I got the whole that hole fixed, that fixed, and uh, I think tomorrow I'll start uh, grinding the welds out, or the next day, and cleaning the inner fenders and frame, and start getting ready things ready for uh, paint. If you like my video, hit the like button. If you want to see this cool Galaxy 500 convertible restored, subscribe to my channel. And thank you for watching.